welcome back to my channel my name is Paige and this is my open book in today's video we're gonna do a video that I've wanted to do for a long time I have been working on a list for a while and I finally got enough saved up to do a video so we're gonna be doing if you like this try this or honestly even if it's like if you didn't like this one I think you'd still like this one because some of these I think the book I'm gonna recommend to you did it better than the inspiration book so let's go through it grab a drink grab a snack and let's get into it okay I broke my recommendations up into three categories so the first category is going to be if you like this book I think you'll also like this book the second category will be even if you didn't like this book I think that this book did it better and you should give it a try and the third category is more so like genres like if you don't typically like X genre try this book to get you into it so here we go we're gonna start on a high note and we're gonna start with if you did like these books you should give these a try first if you liked untying the knot by Megan Quinn I think you're also going to like romance book club untying the knot is a marriage in trouble the only character is a baseball player and it kind of takes you through like this particular couple's relationship from when they first met to when they were dating and things like that and then to their marriage currently and kind of the problems that they're having very very similar <laughs> to this one so this is also a marriage in trouble where the Melma character is a baseball player the twist with this one though that I think gives it something a little bit different is like the series is called there's a bromance book club that this Melma character is going to join to see if he can use romance books to try and figure out how to fix his marriage which I feel like as book girlies we would all appreciate <laughs> that little twist and yeah I just think that this series is not talked about enough and it's really really good so I highly recommend it has a good amount of humor in it just like Megan Quinn's books do and there's also like some sexy scenes in there that like really put it over the top so they definitely are like same same but different <laughs> okay next if you like Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid which like who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> I think you're also going to like Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. Now I know at first glance these two books would not be put in the same category but just hear me out. <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six is this one's more like documentary style and it's not really like a rom-com at all so that's the biggest difference between the two but this one does talk about how like what it's like to be in a band together kind of like drama between band members and how you know when you when you become famous and how your life kind of changes and things like that I think those aspects were some of my favorite parts about wreck the hall so this is a rom-com about the kids of people who were in a band but they have to work together to try and bring the band back together so I think the parts about their parents band really reminded me a lot of Daisy Jones and the six and that made me love this book more than it probably deserved if I'm being honest. This isn't Tessa Bailey's best work I will say. I think it's because like if you are new here Katie and I read this for our book club in December. We were expecting it to be more Christmassy than it was but I think that was just more of a marketing thing than a Tessa Bailey thing. So we won't fault the queen Tessa Bailey for that but <laughs> I think that if you love the vibes of Daisy Jones and the Six you are going to get some of that in Wreck the Halls and it gives you like a fun little rom-com version of the same kind of drama if you will. So I feel like people would normally put those together but I see the vision so you just have to trust me. <laughs> okay next one. This one I think could go in either category of whether you liked Ugly Love. I keep doing the wrong side I'm sorry. If you whether you liked Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover or you didn't I still think that you should give Give Me a Reason by A.L. Jackson and the second book Say It's Forever I believe is the title. The first two books in the Redemption Hill series by A.L. Jackson definitely give me similar vibes. So I personally wasn't the hugest fan of Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover but like I knew I knew what she was trying to do. So in this one the female main character is a pilot and the female main character um like has feelings for him but he's very adamant about the fact that like he can't be in a relationship blah 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 because reasons he's been through something like you know he's been through something pretty terrible that makes him feel like he's not worthy of being in a relationship again but you don't really know what it is and the the plot twist like it is a very heavy topic and it's not a dark romance per se but like 
you almost wish this book had a trigger warning, but at the same time, you can't have a trigger warning because then it would give away the plot. So, like, I, I get what she was going for. That very, like, angsty, emotional, where the male character makes it seem in his head like he's not deserving of love because of this awful thing he did in his past, right? So... I understood what she was going for. It wasn't my personal fave. I think it's because I read so much A.L. Jackson that she does this trope all the time. And I think that she does it really well. So whether you liked, even if you were someone who liked Ugly Love, I still think you would like this one by A.L. Jackson. So in the first book, let's talk about the first book. Um, that one is a single dad. So that's the big difference between the two. And in this one, it's like a motorcycle club kind of vibe. But the Milway character, he owns a club and he definitely has a dark past or he has like, he harbors a lot of guilt and all he cares about is protecting his son. And the female main character is his son's teacher, kindergarten teacher. Um, so he definitely feels like he, that he's not good enough for her because she's very like innocent, private school teacher, you know what I mean? So I think for that aspect, the moment character has a really dark past, he doesn't feel deserving of love, the story is very emotional, there are some dark things that happen to the characters in their backstory. So I think that links these two books together to where I think, whether you like this one or not, you're definitely going to like this one by A.L. Jackson, for sure. Okay, next one. If you liked Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate, then I think you're going to like Blame on the Tequila. So both of these are step-sibling romances. So the difference here... Eyes on Me is more so about like a sex club and the female main character is like a cam girl. Um, so you don't get that in Blame It on the Tequila, but in Blame It on the Blame It on the Tequila, you get where he's a rock star and they haven't talked in years and there's definitely like a hate to love situation going on in the present time. You also get a bonus sharing scene in this one that you don't get in Eyes on Me. So they're kinky in their own ways. So even though this one doesn't involve a sex club, I feel like it still has enough kink in it to where if you like Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate, you're still gonna like Blame It on the Tequila. The step-sibling tension is crazy. Like, I would say Eyes on Me focuses more on the present, whereas Blame It on the Tequila, I think, focuses more on the past, like when they were living together as siblings. So I feel like you even get a little bit more in Blame It on the Tequila for the step-sibling trope because... For Eyes on Me, they didn't really live together that much, so you don't really get a lot of that like history like you get in this one. So give it a try if you liked Eyes on Me or if you just like the step-sibling trope in general. You're definitely going to like this one for sure. It's underrated. Okay, let's transition. Since we're kind of on the topic of tropes, let's go into the other ones that I think if you don't usually like this trope, I think you should still give this book a try. So if you're someone who doesn't like Reverse Harem or Why Choose, you like when the female main character picks one guy but i think you're missing out because one of the best things in my opinion about reading a reverse harem or a white choose is you get extra characters like more characters to fall in love with and it kind of gives you like someone to root for and you get that really strong like characterization and more like variety in your relationship dynamics because you can see how the female main character is different with each guy you know what i mean so if you don't like reverse harem or if you don't like why choose but you still want to see what that's like i think you would like three blind dates by megan quinn so in this one she does pick one guy I'm not going to tell you which one because that will spoil it but you still get three guys that she is going on dates with where you get to learn how they are, you get to see how she's different with each one. And I think it kind of gives you the same vibe as a reverse harem or white shoes, but she still does ultimately pick someone in the end. And you're not getting like a messy love triangle or anything. Because it really is, she's just like going on dates with three different guys and she has to pick which one she's going to end up with. So, I think that you should definitely check this out if you're someone who is not a fan of reverse harem or why choose romances okay next one if you don't typically like mafia romances i think some people don't like the whole like mafioso like very kind of outdated mafia story which i i can understand because when you read a lot of mafia especially you can kind of get a little repetitive i think you would, should definitely try the alliance series by sj tilly these are kind of like mafia adjacent like you definitely get like the the drama of what it's like being in a mafia where they are kind of doing shady things they are still like alpha men and they're very protect protective and possessive 
and there's still like some forbidden like taboo things in these books but they're not like old like outdated mafioso kind of world where it's like oh my father made me marry this guy because he's over the other mafia family you know what i mean i feel like it does break out of that stereotype of mafia romance but it still gives you the same like high stakes as mafia if that makes sense so highly recommend this series because it's not quite mafia but like it gives you similar vibes so i think this is a good way to mix it up if you're kind of tired of the old mafia romance story being recycled all the time okay next for horror i and not usually a horror person, okay? I'm my husband is slowly trying to convert me because he's really into horror movies and horror books and things like that. But I feel like it has to be the right kind of horror for me to like it. I think Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates is where it's at, okay? So in this one, she is minding her own business. She's doing her Sunday morning routine. And then all of a sudden, the news is showing this like crazy thing that's happening outside where there's this crazy snowstorm coming, phone towers aren't working, and her sister is more paranoid than her and her sister um, has this like bunker, I think already prepped for this kind of situation so she gets a call from her sister that basically says go pick up our aunt get all your stuff and come here as soon as possible like this is gonna get ugly so she does that she's kind of like reluctant but she packs up all her stuff and she's driving to her aunt to go pick her up on the way there she gets into this crazy accident in the storm and she wakes up in a house with a guy taking care of her. So it kind of gives like misery Stephen King vibes, but also like if you're a romance girly like me, a dark romance girly, you we love a captor captive romance. Uh that has that in here. And it's like this very old house. So it definitely gives you like spooky vibes and they realize there are these like creatures out in the snowstorm. So that's kind of where the horror element comes into play. I really like this one and I don't typically like horror but I still liked it so if you're like me you don't usually like scary things I think you're gonna like this one if you're a dark romance girl okay we're gonna end off with three books that I personally did not like <laughs> so if you're like me and you did not like those books these three books I'm about to tell you did it way better so let's start with beautiful disaster <laughs> this got turned into a movie and I had seen this book hyped a lot so I was like okay it must be good um it was not I think I gave this like one or two stars it it's one of those like kind of toxic college romances where like he's not a good guy they're very like on again off again but he's an underground street fighter and she's the more so like goody two shoes type so it's it's opposites attract he's a fighter so like normally I would like those things but this did not work for me but you know a book did work for me one Last Shot by Nikki Castle. This is one of my favorite books of all time. This does opposites attract so well because it shows like, you know, from they're from different sides of the tracks, if you will, but they kind of also struggle with some of the same things in a way. So I really liked this one. So I think you still get that kind of like gritty, fighter, protective, gruff MMC. And then you still get like the FMC who is more like well off, hasn't really had to struggle as much, but she still has her own struggles that nobody really knows about. And they kind of heal together in a way. So this book is out of this world. Don't even bother with this. Just, just just go for the best. Don't waste your time. Another one, it's like an unpopular opinion, but I was not a fan of Magnolia Parks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but I understand if you like the whole toxic relationship where you don't know whether you should like the male main character or dislike him. Do we love him? Do we hate him? We don't know. Why does he do things that piss us off? But then we just keep crawling back for more. That whole vibe, right? It gives like Gossip Girl vibes because they're in like a preppy kind of environment. I personally think you should go with the Same View High series by Elle Thorpe because this one is like grittier and you still get like a kind of high school private high school prep school setting to give you the similar vibes there is a male main character in here where you like hate him half the time but you also love him and you're like kind of rooting for him but not really this one's a little bit different though because this one does have like a why choose element to it whereas in magnolia parks it's just one guy but in magnolia parks there is kind of like a love triangle going on with another male character so i think 
I think it works. But the good parts about it, you get Insane View High. So I think you should go with this and you'll be better off. This also isn't as long. <laughs> it's still spread over three books, but the books are a lot easier to binge. We love that. They're on Kindle Unlimited. I highly recommend. Okay, and last but certainly not least, because this one just really <laughs> upset me, if I'm being honest. This book was hyped so much, and it still is. The whole series, like everyone talks, oh my god, dark hockey romance, it's so good. We love it, we love it, this is so good. I see so many people rave about the series, and I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Now, granted, I haven't tried the other books. Maybe the other books are better, but this one, it was just not it. Um, it starts off where the main characters are texting each other because one of them has the wrong number but then they need to kind of develop their own relationship via text message the dark element comes in because the main character starts kind of like stalking her basically to figure out who she is um and i don't know normally i would like that normally i love a stalker <laughs> in books in books in books um i i can't even remember what it is about this that i didn't like Oh, actually, I just remembered something that I didn't like. The female main character, unfortunately, we all know men can be pigs sometimes, right? But not every single man in existence is a pig. Um, the female main character, however, it seems like every male that she interacts with is a pig and just like wants her for her body and objectifies her and all that. Which again, I think having one or two characters that do that is is fine. Whatever. I know that stuff like that does happen all day every day I understand but it gets to be a little bit much when literally she can't even look at a guy without him like getting hard and looking at her as if she's a piece of meat and I don't know it was just too much for me I don't know why it just gave me the ick anytime it was a female main character's point of view it just really rubbed me the wrong way and the moment character I just couldn't like I just couldn't feel for him like he just felt very Maybe he didn't have enough personality for me. I feel like his only personality traits were that he was stalking her, he was a hockey player, and his dad was the mayor or something like that. I think those are the only like personality traits that he had. I feel like I didn't really understand him as a person. So I think that's why this one didn't really work for me. But similar setup that is one of my top reads of the year, Puck Secret by GN Wright. Way better. The Dirty Talk is top tier. There's a little bit of darkness in it, but it still gives you like college hockey vibes, which I personally like college hockey romance better. But this one has a similar setup where they're texting each other because they had the wrong number. They develop their own relationship via text message, but they also know each other in real life. They just don't realize that that's who they're texting. So you kind of get two relationship dynamics going on. You have when they're texting and then in real life, and those two things kind of start to merge and I think that G and Reich did it so well and it still gives like kind of dark romance vibes because the male main character is not a nice guy and there is like some history there because in this one the female main character is the mayor's daughter and he had an affair with the male main character's mom back in the day so you kind of get that dynamic she is being forced into an arranged marriage by her dad so I feel like you still get some dark cocky vibes. There's a similar wrong number situation going on. And the, this one is just way better in my opinion. You really feel for the characters. You feel connected to them. They, it just feels more real to me. This one, I just got sucked in. And the second book is also really, really good. So don't waste your time with this one in my personal opinion. You could try the other books. I don't know, TBD. But this one's where it's at. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed these recommendations. Give this video a like and leave a comment down below telling me your thoughts. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.